Cormorants, what flies do you need, what rig do you need, and how can you get the most out of this method? That's what we're going to be talking about today. What is up guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. If you are a returning subscriber, it's good to see your face again. And if you are new here, my name is Reese, and I make fly fishing videos and tutorials that will help you catch more fish. So if you would like to learn more, please press that red subscribe button and smash that bell so that you don't miss out on future videos. Okay, cormorants. They are some people's bogey fly. I was the same at one point. For a while, I could not catch a fish on a cormorant. I had no confidence in that fly whatsoever, but over time and with a few small amendments, I managed to get fish on them regularly and now have confidence. So let's first of all talk about cormorants and what they're supposed to imitate. Some people believe that they imitate a buzzer, and I guess if you tie it very, very sparse, and very very small it could be argued that it does but I think for me personally the way I see a cormorant is as a subtle lure to put on when everybody else is fishing big bright lures. It is one of those patterns that is very versatile and can be fished at any point in any conditions. Generally I tend to find that winter and spring are where it's at its best namely because in the early part of winter big lures and bung and stuff like that tends to take priority. Moving on to the warmer months where the fish haven't quite switched on to feeding on naturals confidently, that is where I feel cormorants can fill the gap really, really well. So setups, let's talk about how we would approach fishing these. Now you can fish these in a matter of different ways. If you're fishing it from a boat, you'll fish it differently from how you will probably fish in a small still water. So I will work from the bottom up and we'll look at the boat first. Two of the most common ways you fish cormorants on a boat are early season. If the fish aren't high in the water, you will fish a die three. That is a density index three line, a line that sinks at three inches per second. Your cast will then be a pulling cast effectively. So you're going to have a blob on the top or a bright lure, one or two cormorants sandwiched on droppers in between that, and on the end you're going to have a fab, a booby or a blob. It's your own preference what you put on the end, but generally this method is trying to search out fish early season. What you'll tend to find is in your first couple of hours you'll have fish on the blob, and then as the day wears on and the fish turn off the colour, that is when the cormorants will come to the fore. Now in terms of that setup, generally you're probably looking at a 20 foot leader, five foot, five foot, five foot and five foot. If you can't cast four flies, that's fine. We'll just go blob, cormorant, fab, for example. Three flies, one single cormorant. And you're covering water with this method. So this is about drifting long drifts over known parts of a lake and trying to find fresh fish that are up for a chase. You can mix up the retrieves with this, you can go fast with the strips or roly-poly, or you can go for a steady and slow figure of eight. Both will work dependent on the day. Let's roll forward now. We're now into the latter part of spring and you're boat fishing. Chloe dog is a perfect example of this. Chloe dog fishes really well on sink tip lines from spring onwards. So you've got options here in terms of sink tips. You've got the real midge tip, you've got the airflow slow and fast tip, you've got the F and F tips, and any of them will do as long as you understand where in the water column the fish are sitting with respect to the line. And where earlier in the season you were seeking out fish that were fresh to the lake and willing to chase, the key here is that you're trying to slow everything down and target a different type of fish. So if there are stockies there, yeah, you can fish a die three if you want, but you will find more success in the later months of spring and summer if you fish a sink tip with two cormorants and a fab or a blob, a cormorant and a fab and just fish them dead slow on a washing line. That is largely because at that point in the year the fish generally, the larger population of fish, will be in the top five foot of water. So the sink tip line offers you the best presentation in that water column and keeps those flies there for the longest. And that would be a cast of five foot, five foot and five foot or if you're confident angler, six, six, six for example. And the difference here as well is that when you're trying to fish die three and pulling, you can fish eight pound fluorocarbon. When you're going to switch to fishing cormorants on a washing line very, very slowly, you want to drop the leader down to about six or seven pound. 
it'll offer you better presentation it'll make the flies look way more natural in the water column as they suspend there on the washing line so that's boat fishing let's have a look if you were on a small still water how things would change <laughs> So you can still fish a die three and pull it if you want, like the first method. I tend to find that it doesn't work half as well as it would on a boat. I think that's largely because on a boat you're covering so much water, whereas on a small still water you are confined to your area and the fish will quickly switch off that method. So what we'll then do is we will go down the small still water route. So we would fish, for example, a slow or a fast intermediate. We'd fish a 15 foot leader and then for example we would have a dropper at seven foot which would be one cormorant and then eight foot after you would have your lure so the idea here is you get the best of both worlds you've got a very small fly on the dropper that can imitate a lot of small things suggestive things that the fish which have been in the lake quite a while might switch on to but also if you've got any fresh fish in the lake that are up for a chase they will take that lure on the point so that is covering fresh fish with one single cormorant on the cast. What if we want to present flies dead still in the water column and barely move them? For that, you're gonna to switch to either a floating line or a sink tip line. I still prefer a sink tip line, that's just a confidence thing for me. But your cast there will look very similar to the spring boat cast. So we're fishing five foot, five foot and five foot. We'll have two cormorants and then a fab or a booby on the point. The idea there, is basically cast it out and leave it sit there and just twiddle it back very, very slowly. So the difference there is now we aren't trying to target the fresh fish in the lake that are willing to chase. We are trying to target the older fish that have become accustomed to a feeding pattern of naturals and we're hoping we can convince them to take that method instead. And it does work very well on its day. A mention should be given as well for water clarity. Cormorants are very, very, very good in coloured water. There's a good reason why Elodine fishes really, really well to cormorants because the water isn't gin clear there. And if you visit any fishery that has coloured or peaty water, I would strongly recommend you have a cormorant on your cast. You'll be surprised how well the fish can pick out a small little black cormorant over a lot of other things. I'm going to give you a recommendation of three cormorants that I have complete confidence in that work. First of all, we've got a pearly cormorant. This has been around for years. It's a fantastic fly and this accounts for a lot of fish on both large reservoirs and small still waters alike. I've done a video on this which you can find up here if you want to learn how to tie it. So that would be option number one. Option number two is a red-headed jungle cock cormorant. So this is a bit brighter, this is a bit more in your face, but it's intentionally that way. This pattern works really, really well on Chloe Dog early season. I'm not sure whose version cormorant this is, it's certainly not mine, but it works. And with this, you'll find that if you've got a bit more coloured water or you've got fresher fish in the lake, I will tend to go for the brighter version first, this red one, over say a pearly one. Okay, and then finally, a white cormorant. Now, white cormorants are definitely not as popular as your blacks. There are some fisheries who that fish really well to it, Loch Inch being an obvious one. This pattern I tied this up for a specific reason. I was on Elodine years and years and years ago now, and I only caught a couple of fish that day, but Phil Dixon was there and Phil slaughtered them. He caught so many fish that day, and I didn't know what he was fishing, but then after a bit of a conversation with the fishery, he was fishing white cormorants. So I decided from that point on, right, I'm gonna get good at fishing white cormorants because I need to have confidence in this method. Now, if you would like to learn more about winter lure fishing, why not check out this video here? And YouTube seems to think that you would like to see this video here. And as always, guys, if you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. My name is Reese. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.